Yay! So I've been asked that I was told the introduction last time was fun, so I decided to do it again. Hopefully, you are all enjoying yourselves. That won't last very long because I'm reading out a PowerPoint. So we're going to be looking at magnetism. This is the stuff that will definitely be coming up in your exam, so play close attention. I'm going to draw. I'm going to. Okay, I'm not going to draw. I'm going to try and draw right now. Golly, I feel like. All right, silly Billy sometimes. Oh, yeah, okay. Now I am going to draw. A magnet, and the magnet will have a north pole and a south pole. And remember, just like Santa Claus, magnetic fields go from north to south. Okay, so if you ever drawing magnetic field lines, make sure you talk about them from going north to south, just like Santa Claus goes from the north pole to the south pole every year to bring little children their presents. Poles are places where the magnetic fields are strongest, and they are they are strongest there because the magnetic field lines are most dense. Permanent magnets produce their own magnetic fields. Permanent magnets can attract and repel. If I was to put a magnet here, south to north, these two would repel each other because the magnetic fields are not going in the same direction. They're going in opposite directions. If I was to put a south pole here, because my magnetic field is coming out of the north and into the south, then my poles would, my magnets would attract because the magnetic fields are going the same direction. Induced means to make make for a small amount of time. Induced magnets are material that become magnetic when placed in the magnetic field of a permanent magnet or of another temporary magnet, I suppose, just inside of a magnetic field. Induced magnets can only attract. When the magnetic field is removed, an induced magnet will lose most or all of its magnetism quickly. And this is useful most of the time. It is not a bad thing. Do not think induced magnets less than their permanent brethren. They are useful for what we want them to do. When two magnets are brought together, they exert a force on each other. The two light poles repel, as we said. Two unlike poles attract. Attraction and, repulsion, uh, attraction and repulsion are examples of non-contact force, along with everybody's favorite, gravity. And this is why it's a nicer picture than what I put up the other stage. Of this other, that was a bad drawing. This is a really good drawing that I did earlier. The magnetic fields here, north to south, they are going in the same direction, so they will attract. If I put a north to a north, they're going in opposite direction, so they will repel. There are four main magnetic materials you need to know. Iron, steel, nickel, and cobalt. Now, iron is useful for temporary magnets. Steel is a good one for permanent magnets. Nickel is good for plating other magnets because it's a magnetic material that you can cover more expensive magnets with. And cobalt gives you high temperature magnets, high degrees C. There is always a force of attraction between magnets and magnetic materials. The magnetic field is the region around a magnet where a force acts on another magnet or magnetic material. Did you hear about the magic tractor? It turned into a field. Ha, 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 ha. The strength of the magnetic field depends on the distance from the magnet and the field is strongest at the poles. If I was to place a piece of iron here, Fe, it will be strongly attracted to my magnet. If I was to put a piece of iron here, Fe will be weaker, weak, more weakly attracted to the magnet because there's weaker field lines. And if I put my iron all the way over here or all the way down here, oh, I meant to write that and then Fe, but it's okay. You know what I was trying to do. This would be weak, this would be weak, this would be strongest, and this would be second strongest. And here's the information without me scribblings on it. The direction of a magnetic field at any point is given by the direction of the force that would act on another north pole placed at that point. What does that mean? It just means that magnetic field lines always go from north to south. To find the direction of a magnetic field and bar magnet, there are two main techniques. Place a bar magnet under a piece of paper and sprinkle iron, iron filings all over the paper. Tapping the paper will produce the magnetic field pattern of the bar magnet. You can see that here we've got these areas where there is a lot of iron stuck closely together. Here and here it is further apart. This is proof that we have strong field lines here and weak field lines here. Ergo, ergo listen to me. Therefore, we've got stronger magnetic field lines near the poles and weaker magnetic field lines everywhere else. You can also use a plotting compass. So a plotting compass has got a south tail and a north tail. The south tail is attracted to the north pole of this bar magnet, meaning I can move my plotting compass around the, um, the bar magnet and I can figure out the direction that it is going. If you place little dots as you go along, you're able to then, when the compass has been taken away, draw a line that shows, well, that's really good with a mouse. Okay, it was really good with a mouse. Draw a line showing the magnetic field lines. Magnetic compass contains, contains a small bar magnet. 
It will always have a tip and some sort of a tail. I really wish I could draw arrows. It's something deficient in my life, and I should just get better at it. Okay, I'm going to stop now. The Earth is a magnetic field. The compass points in the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. The magnetic field pattern produced by compass needles leads us to conclude that the Earth's core is magnetic. The origin of the Earth's magnetic field is thought to be the movement of molten iron in the core. So we've got molten iron in the core, and um, it makes the magnetic field. That's all we need to know. Happy to leave it there. We also have these fun little rules, the right-hand rule and the left-hand rule. When a current flows through a conducting wire, a magnetic field is produced around the wire. Electricity and magnetism are two sides of the same coin. Electric fields can induce magnetic fields, and magnetic fields can induce electric fields. The strength of the magnetic field depends on the current moving through the wire and the distance from the wire. So if we've got lots and lots of current moving um, in this in this um, in this wire, and for the sake of this, we say it goes from positive to negative. Lots and lots of current going through that, it will be a stronger magnetic field. Gosh darn it, just draw an arrow. Also, the closer you are to the magnetic field, the stronger the magnetic field. We can see that because the lines are closer together, strong, uh, close. Close together, near the wire, and further away, far apart. This is the right-hand rule. This is somebody's right hand. If you grab a wire with your right hand and put your thumb in the direction of current from positive to negative, then you're able to figure out the direction of the magnetic field by the direction your fingers are pointing. And again, take away my number. A solenoid is a coil of wire with a current running through it. We have a, so, uh, a coil of wire with current coming in. I goes in that way and out that way. Shaping a wire to make a solenoid increases the strength of the magnetic field by the current through the wire. This is because inside we have got lots and lots of what we say uniform magnetic field lines that are very close together. So we have strong magnetic field lines here, weak magnetic, a strong magnetic force here, weak magnetic force here, dense magnetic field lines there, weak magnetic field lines there. And if we've got current going in, the arrow coming up, the easiest way to remember the direction that current is going is just follow that arrow around. Just let it go in, and it's that direction. Follow this arrow around. Oh, well, never mind. Sorry, I, I did something silly. Follow the direction that the current is going in, and that's the direction of your current. And it has to go the same way on both sides. I made a mistake. Ignore me. Sad face, Sidney McKelvey. The magnetic field of a solenoid has a similar shape to that of a bar magnet, though the magnetic field extends inside the solenoid and is strong and uniform. Just means the same, excuse me, amount. Oh my gosh. Excuse me. The same amount of space between lines. It is possible to increase the strength of a solenoid's magnetic field by adding an iron core. We want our iron in there to make it stronger. Increasing the current have more amps pass through, and increasing number of turns of wire in the solenoid. More turns, more uh, each of these little wraps there, that'll be one turn, two turns, three turns, and it's called a turn. More wires equals more strength. A solenoid with an iron core is an electromagnet. Break that down. Electro from electricity and magnet, obviously something to do with magnetism. It is a magnet that is made by electricity. Fleming's left-hand rule, FBI, freeze, FBI. Agent McKelvey here reporting on how to figure out the direction of a force when there is a current moving through a magnet and the magnetic field is acting at right angles to it. Your thumb is the force line, your first finger is the B for a magnetic field line, and your third finger is the current. When a, conductor's play, uh, when a conductor carrying a current is placed in an already present magnetic field, the magnet producing the field and the conductor exert a force on each other. It is called the motor effect. It's called this because it can be used to make motors work. The direction of the force can be found if the direction of the current flow and the direction of the magnetic field are, alone, are known. In the diagram, the thumb, first finger, and second finger are held at right angles to each other. Right angle there, right angle there. I'll put my little thingy in there. First finger is the field, the magnetic field. And we can do this if you like, except we're not going to do that. We're going to do force FBI, force thumb, magnetic field B, current I. And then you've got to twist your arm around to figure out which direction it's going. We can do a video on that if anybody wants it. The other factors that affect the force in a conductor like this one right here, I have current going from this side all the way through to this side. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line my middle finger up. I'm going to put my, my FBI out. Actually, I wonder if this is going to record. I don't know if it will, actually. Well, that could be exciting. Let's see. Let's see. If that... Okay, there's a lot of McKelvey there for one, one moment. It's almost too much of a person. So um, this is the FBI thing. So I've got a right angle there, and I've got a right angle there. And you put it out like a little gun. Um, force on your thumb magnetic field on your middle on your first finger and current in your uh, on your on your middle finger also don't tell anybody that i just flipped my middle finger at you because i could get in trouble so don't do that but i've lined up my middle finger there i've got my finger pointing north to south so i know that the direction of this force is going to oops be upwards b going that way i going that way f going that way if we've got lots of a, what's of, of magnetism there, magnetic flux density. So if we have lots and lots of force lines here, if we've got a big amount of magnetism, then we're going to get a much stronger force reaction. If we've got lots of current, then we are going to have lots of reaction. And um, amps and pairs, it can be either or. We're just trying to be fancy here. And also, if we've got lots of conductor in here, it's going to have a stronger force. If this wire was half the size, it's half the force. Force in a conductor is magnetic flux density times current times length. FBI losers is this equation. But you don't need to remember it. It's just fun to say it. Here's a question you can have a look at yourself. Bearing in mind, a couple of things. Six centimeter wire, 50 milliamps. So we're going to have to divide that by 100 to get it to meters. And we're going to have to divide this by 1,000 to get it to amps. 0 0.25 Teslas. This is the unit for B, magnetic flux density. And here's your answer. A coil of wire with a current in a magnetic field tends to rotate. This is the basis of an electric motor. So basically what's happening here, we have got a current moving through this wire. We have a magnetic field working at right angles, so we're going to have a force that's acting upon it. But this wire is able to spin. And as it spins, it is able to... Um, as it, because it's being pushed by a force, it's able to spin. And when that happens, you'll eventually get this roundabouts motion. As the coil of wire carrying a current is in a magnetic field, the coil will experience a force in the direction which can be found using Fleming's left-hand rule. The coil of wire shown will experience an upward force on the left-hand side and also a downwards force on the right-hand side because you'll notice the current is going in an opposite direction. Look at the current in this direction. Look at the current in that direction. Upwards force here, downwards force here, spinning my wire around. <coughs> Excuse me. As the coil will be fixed to an axle, the coil of wire will rotate in a clockwise direction. And some questions. Here they are. Little cat feet. You know, pause. Ha, ha, ha. Little cat feet. There shouldn't be catists, so little dog feet. Salt backwards. Pity that he pause. And another pause. Don't forget to do your full working out. I haven't explained this, um, but you can find stuff in WHA Science. And here are your answers. Look at you. Well done. Congratulations. That's amazing. Don't make me say pause again. Some more answers. Some more answers. If only life was this easy. Just wait long enough and someone will show you the answers. And again. And again. And again. And again. Right. Electromagnetic induction, the national grid and transformers. Okay. So. <clears throat> I need to break apart this word just a tiny little bit, okay? Electro magnetic induction. We've seen all these words before, but I just want to make you absolutely sure what they mean. Electro, obviously referring to the flow of electrons, and with it, everything that comes with it. Magnetic, uh, force of attraction. Or repulsion involving a magnetic field. 
And induction means to make something, do something. I spent a lot of my time inducing you all to revise. I'm trying to make you do something. So if an electrical conductor moves relative to a magnetic field, or if there is a change in the magnetic field around a conductor, a potential difference is induced. If a conductor moves relative to a magnetic field, or if the magnetic field changes around a conductor, potential difference is induced. It's induced across the ends of the conductor. If the conductor is part of a complete circuit, a current is therefore induced. This is called the generator effect. Generators are called generators because they generate electricity using this effect. An electrical conductor moving relative to a magnetic field or a magnetic field changing around the conductor. Induced means to bring about, produce or cause. An induced current is one that is produced by moving a conductor relative to a magnetic field. An induced current generates a magnetic field that opposes the original change either the movement of the conductor or the change in the magnetic field. These, um, this opposition is always equal. Okay, that's the worst typing, spelling, writing I've ever done. Equal, but opposites. A simple generator will have a coil of wire, like that. That moves in a magnetic field, like here. A potential difference is induced across the ends of the conductor, and there is a complete circuit. And as there is a complete circuit, a current is induced in the coil of wire. To increase the size of the induced potential difference, the coil of wire should be rotated faster. Or the magnetic field should be made stronger or the number of turns of wire in the coil should be increased. Just like we saw for solar mounts. And we can use this idea for a transformer as well. A basic transformer consists of a primary and secondary coil wound in an iron core. Iron is used as it is easily magnetized. You need to know about two types of transformers, step up and step down. How does a transformer work? Here, I have got a certain amount of current flowing into my primary winding. And we all know that a current going into a coil of wire generates a magnetic field. So in here, I now have a magnetic field. But the direction of my current is changing all the time. It is an alternating current, which means the direction of my, magne my magnetic field is changing all the time. And because this is iron, my iron core is going to become magnetized, meaning that the direction of the magnetic field throughout my iron core is going to be changing all the time. And what did I just say? If I move a magnetic field inside of a current, I will induce a voltage. I will induce a potential difference. So the magnetic field moving here through this coil of wire will induce a current that will keep on changing direction and therefore induce a voltage. I mean, induce a voltage and therefore a current. And that's the end of the slides. Oh, keep them because they're precious. Have a lovely afternoon, evening, morning, or whatever, depending on where you are and what you're doing. That's the end. No, okay, that's the end. That's the end.